Hello, everybody. We are Eau Claire, Wisconsin. We're happy to tell you a bit of our story today. Now, a lot of people think we got our name from a tasty pastry, but that's actually Eau Claire. Now, we're Eau Claire, and legend has it that when the French settlers were coming down the muddy waters of the Chippewa River, they came to the clear waters of the Eau Claire, and they exclaimed, Voici la Eau Claire. Here is clear water. Well, and the name stuck, didn't it, Lee? Yeah, you bet, Michael. And there is another theory out there that if you hold up your right hand, it's similar to the shape of the state of Wisconsin. Now, if you point down to the base of my thumb there, that's Green Bay, Wisconsin. That is not us. We are in northwest Wisconsin, home to beautiful rolling hills and flowing rivers. We are Eau Claire, where we have a saying. Plus ensemble toujours. Plus ensemble toujours. More together always. Now, just as the phoenix rose from the ashes of its predecessor, so did one of the greatest revitalization efforts in downtown Eau Claire's history, Phoenix Park. Ah, Eau Claire, the side of city. In 1880, there were more sawmills in Eau Claire than any other city in the world. Sawdust filled the air, and the sound of shrieking saw blades filled the night. And if you look over there, across the river, you can see Phoenix Manufacturing. And that's where they made the very first steam locomotive that could pull logs out of the forest. Now, I still prefer the smell of my horse over that stinky machine they call, you know, a contraption. But, you know, I guess they call that progress. Well, next to Phoenix Manufacturing, they had these huge piles of coal, and they would cook those down and take off the natural gas to put in those little twinkly lights downtown. And well, you know, for the next hundred years, that five-acre site in the center of downtown, well, it was used for industrial purposes. And it worked until about 1970, when it lay barren and full of all these nasty chemicals like cyanide and lead and things a simple lumberjack like me can't even pronounce. It was dead. The very heart of my beloved city was dead. Well then, about 1980, maybe 81, the city of Eau Claire, they came along and they bought that property. And it took them a little while, but by 1991, they took out all those mean, nasty chemicals and they filled up the floodplain and they made it into this beautiful shape. And then, then a group of citizens came along and they were gonna collaborate. I know, complicated word for a simple guy like me, but they were gonna collaborate. And I can't tell you that they didn't squabble a little, just like old Cookie and Shorty up at the cook shack. They squabbled a little bit, but they came up with a plan. They came up with a plan where people could work and play and shop all within walking distance. And if you go down there now, you will see apartment buildings and businesses that bring thousands of people down every day, a park that has over 100 scheduled events each summer, a, a thriving farmer's market, and music. Oh my gosh, the music brings thousands of people down. They're not my kind of tapping and fiddling, but I guess it's what they like. <sighs> and I tell you, Phoenix Park, it really did rise up out of the ashes to become the beating, vibrant heart of my beloved city, Eau Claire. Just one block upriver of Phoenix Park lies the Forest Street Community Garden, now at the end of its sixth season. This ambitious project is situated within a floodplain, and so, according to FEMA, can no longer have um, structures with walls. And so this makes it a perfect location for a community garden. The Forest Street Community Garden has truly transformed this marginal floodplain into a powerhouse of local food production. Now, members of the garden can participate in two ways, either through um, individual rental, rental plots or through the shared garden. The 65 rental plots burst with favorite crops from heirloom tomatoes to enormous sunflowers. Beyond these plots lies a half acre of unique shared garden space, a collaborative uh, model with membership offered for only $20 per season. Last season's 25 members transplanted donated seedlings, managed weeds, and harvested produce, 70% of which was donated to Eau Claire organizations dedicated to alleviating local hunger. Community gardens are truly a growing trend in Eau Claire, uh, blooming in five different locations around our city. At a time with an ever-increasing amount of people interested in accessing high-quality, affordable, healthy food, Eau Claire's community <coughs> gardens are beginning to meet these needs. 
cultivating a healthier community. Just as we have come together today to tell you a little bit of our story, so also did our community come together to establish a comprehensive movement that would endure far longer than any single project. A comprehensive, clear vision for Eau Claire's future. Well, when you think about the tools, the acts, I mean, can you imagine if I have to carry that today? <laughs> I am so glad that I don't have to. And that's <laughs> That's what Clear Vision is about. It is really a tool um, to help <coughs> the people in our community to have a voice in improving the quality of life for a healthier community. My name is Catherine, and I have served in the past as a civic engagement coach for Clear Vision Eau Claire. The roots of Clear Vision are founded in the National uh, Civic League here in the United States. We are an informal group of people who have really gathered around for the common good. So what exactly does that mean for Clear Vision and Clear? What that means is we use a specific theoretical model called public achievement. One of the tenets of public achievement is to use a skill called self-interest when we are building relationships and quite frankly building power in a community. Self-interest often has sometimes a negative connotation. And the way that we teach the model is to say self-interest is really about looking at yourself amongst others. And so really harnessing the collective power of each of ourselves amongst others and then finding a way to collaborate around what really binds us together. An example that I'll be sharing today is about an initiative that came out of Clear Vision. We were working with, I was able to coach a team of people who consisted of uh, myself, a social worker, a county board supervisor, and a couple of gentlemen who had recently transitioned out of jail and back into the community who were living at a transitional home and had experienced homelessness throughout their life. And what came to be was um, reinvigorating something called Community Day, where we brought many resources to a place called the Community Table in Eau Claire that serves a hot meal to anybody in Eau Claire every day. And so we gathered and connected resources every week for the community. And it was really um, based out on a response from one of the group members who said, you know, when someone is transitioning out of jail back into the community, it would be really helpful to have all of these resources together under a roof to simplify the process of putting one's life back together. And so that's what we were able to do. Throughout the process, though, we were able to build and develop civic engagement skills, not only for myself as uh, a younger leader, and also for the, the group members. Some of those group members went on to help start something called the Sojourner House in Eau Claire, which is a homeless shelter for men, men and women. And what happened is, the feedback that we received was, they used the skills that they learned through Clear Vision Eau Claire to then further and apply another community project. And for those of you who are here today, you would agree with me that Eau Claire is a beautiful city. Um, just like its people, we have over 20 different languages. And um, Hmong is my language. Many of the Hmong families in Eau Claire came to, uh, came to Eau Claire in the early 80s. And we're the largest minority in Eau Claire today. And so what Clear Vision has been able to do is to help us as a minority group, we need to have a voice in the decision-making process. And uh, Clear Vision has been able to provide us with a voice to do that. During my time as a civic engagement coach, I was also a student, a non-traditional student at the university, and I was finishing up my bachelor's degree. I was also a single parent at the time, and I was considered a um, low-income parent. And I remember at the one of our meetings that we were wrapping up at the community table, um, the county board supervisor that was a part of our group, when we were saying our goodbyes, she said, oh, I love you. And I thought, what? What did you just say? You know, I didn't know electives can say I love you. So I, I said, well, may I speak with you? And she says, sure. And she's a, a petite firehouse of a woman. And she kind of put her hands on my shoulders and squared me in the eyes and said, you know, when I was growing up, I was taught this concept of a beloved community. And that the way we do community is because we care about each other and yes, we actually love each other. 
And so she's made it part of her civic habit to let people know that she's an advocate for this beloved community and sometimes shares that love verbally with people that she's working with. That was so inspiring to me that you could actually help to build and develop a beloved community through an elected leadership role. And in 2012, I was able to join the city council and presently serve as the youngest female and the first Latina or even Latino elected in our community. And I am also proud to say that um, we are the first city to elect the Hmong American City Council to serve on our council and originally um, the Hmong American School Board to serve in our school board. And so with that, you know, that's why Oakland should be the uh, American City because we truly care about our citizens and we want to make sure that they have uh, a, a good quality of life while they're here. And so, you know, diversity is definitely the future and uh, we're better when we come together. Now, the six community priorities that came out of Clear Vision don't stand alone. Together, they form the foundation for a healthy future for all of Eau Claire's residents. The Health Chapter story is one of an award-winning plan with an Eau Claire City Comprehensive Plan. It has gained national and state recognition since it was developed and passed in late 2013 and serves as a model for other communities to follow. The two previous stories you heard are compelling examples of exactly what the health chapter seeks to accomplish. That is, by working together with local stakeholders, we can build places and communities that are safe, healthy, and sustainable. That is exactly the mission of the city of Eau Claire. More specifically, the health chapter <coughs> raises awareness and focuses public health considerations within the context of the built environment. Places such as streets, schools, neighborhoods, parks, and workplaces. By looking at health through this lens, we can more comprehensively identify and tackle those issues we as a community have identified as priorities. Things such as binge drinking, drug abuse, localized crime, food insecurity, and the alarming obesity rate. The health chapter covers six areas, active living, drug abuse, environmental exposure, land use, safety and crime. And I just forgot one and I apologize. Um, environmental exposures. Their policies are all geared toward raising awareness and reducing poor health trends at the population level as opposed to individual levels. And they're all, the mandates are all linked back to built environment strategies. One example of that strategy would be how complete streets can increase active transportation, thereby reducing poor health trends. Walkable mixed-use developments, such as Phoenix Park, which was once a polluted brownfield, now include a thriving farmer's market, community gardens, open spaces and trails, and act as an archetype for what healthy places and communities should be all about. As we move forward, the health chapter is just one step toward health in all policies one in which we continue to work together with local stakeholders to make the healthy choice be the easy choice. Creating a healthier and more vibrant community is not easy. And so when you put your heart and soul into making a difference in those areas, it is beyond rewarding when things actually start to change. I was a member of a grassroots effort called Achieve Eau Claire. And Achieve was a multi-sector collaboration that led the advocacy for creating the health chapter. Um, <laughs> just forgot the next line. Uh, in creating the health chapter. It, was, it has given me hope. What we literally achieved has given me hope that um, we can tackle societal and community issues in uh, the health area. The, Local city community staff, as well as elected politicians, came together with us. And they not only listened to us, but they worked with us. And they worked with us to see the connection between the goals and policies of the health chapter and the actual health of the community. We, what I learned in this process is that if we work together and we team up with others, and we actually listen to each other's viewpoints, we can create a much stronger plan for the community. I'm excited about the community health plan and its goals and policies. We, um, and its goals and policies. We are um, anxious to implement many of the goals, including developing more complete streets, reducing tobacco exposure in our community parks and apartments, 
using the health impact assessment in their community, and so much more. I truly believe that the health chapter will make Eau Claire a much better place to live. Thank you for letting us tell you a little bit about Eau Claire and the Eau Claire that we know and that we love. And while we're certainly proud of our history, we know that our story is just reaching its apex. Yeah, we're just getting to that point where you can't put it down. It really is a great place to live, work, and play. Thank you so much. So what you saw was our actual presentation that we made when we went to Denver, Colorado. And now, in the famous words of somebody else, I'd like to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> so we had our performances over two days in Denver. And at the very end, the MC, of course, gathered the 25 communities and supporters in a big ballroom at, at the hotel. And we knew that out of the, all of the performances, only 10 cities names were going to um, be called up. And I would say that we were all feeling pretty pumped about our presentation. We worked so hard. And in fact, I think we'd all agree that the actual presentation that we did in Denver, the final one, the one that counts, was the best one. There was great energy and synergy, and it was awesome. We had a great feeling. And so we started to hear cities' names being called out. We heard Montgomery, Alabama, San Pablo, California, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And after every city name was called, people would rise and give a standing ovation. And of course, we gave our standing ovations too. And then, we heard Independence, Oregon, Hampton, Virginia, Brownsville, Texas, Brush, Colorado, and I'll have you know, Brush, Colorado even has an exclamation point in their name of the city, which is pretty clever. You get awards, <laughs> that's pretty good. And I will have to say that there was kind of this um, excitement that was dwindling to a, uh, a preliminary disappointment. And we were sitting in the seats, and of course we've done eight standing ovations, and we're so happy for everybody. And I remember sitting in my seat, my um, one of our partners that we uh, had presented with, I was sitting next to, and I remember clutching something, I don't know if it was a hand or an arm, but it was just a lot of nervous energy of just like, oh, please let them call Eau Claire, please let them call Eau Claire. It was your hand. <laughs> <laughs> She's recovered. Uh, and. Then they called Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and we jumped out of our seats and we ran to the stage and our group got to accept the award. And it was thrilling. It was absolutely thrilling. And um, so now I'll share a couple of things about um, the benefit of an All-America City Award for our community. And then we have time to take one or two questions um, before we wrap up. So some of the benefits that the award um, promotes is to really have um, an increased hope in a community, an increased can-do civic engagement spirit. Um, as far as the economic development side of things, this can help to attract and or retain businesses in a community, again, solidifying more of that tax base and increase in jobs, and also helps with the increase of uh, being uh, grant uh, recipients and an increase in tourism, no doubt. Um, so there's lots more that we can say, uh, as you can only imagine, we are really thrilled and honored uh, to be part of this work, and we have a lot more work to do in front of us, so we're not um, resting on our laurels just yet. Um, so with that, are there, um, actually, before I take questions, I just want to give everybody an opportunity to um, say their name and where they're from. You'll get to see a little bit of the diversity of the community. So if you can say your name, I'll help you pass the mic. I'm Stephanie with Visit Eau Claire. Linda John, Visit Eau Claire. Michael Struble, Visit Eau Claire. Barb Powers, retired, co-chair of the Chronic Disease Prevention Action Team. Yeah, Kelly Schrock, Visit Eau Claire. Jolie Lee Fong, Visit Eau Claire. Ken Venice, and I'm not Visit Eau Claire, I work at the YMCA. <laughs> Kenzie Phillips, Visit Eau Claire. Jackie Booth, Artisan Forge Studios. Catherine Rapaz of Visit Eau Claire. Kate Beaton, AmeriCorps for UW Extension. Dale Peters with the City of Eau Claire. I am Lee Heike and I own Hope Promotions in the heart of our downtown. <laughs> I am Leah Schwann and I live in Eau Claire. And I work with the school district and I'm representative of my community. 
Thank you to all of my colleagues who worked so hard in making this happen. So as I said, we have time for one or two questions and be glad to take any. Say the, um, I'm going to have you say the question in the mic. <laughs> um, I was just wondering if the program, was it specifically that you were doing a Leadership Eau Claire project through this, that it just happened that, or that did you dovetail with leadership, with Visit Eau Claire to get that done? Great question. I'm going to let um, one of our colleagues answer that. Um, it was brought forward to Leadership Eau Claire to see if they would do it as one of their projects. Uh, so they did take the lead on it uh, and essentially coordinated and pulled all the players together. And of course, one of the very significant players, as you can tell from the numbers here, uh, was Visit Eau Claire. Uh, we would not have been able to uh, have the presentation without the support from Visit Eau Claire. But it was uh, technically started by and followed through and led by um, uh, a Leadership Eau Claire project. Great question. And time for one more. Great. So we probably don't have time for all of you to answer this question, but I'd be interested, just a few of you would reflect on when you went through this process, what did you learn about your community that you didn't know before? Excellent. So we'll take how about two or three? And first one fits our arm up, it's the <laughs> is the winner. Michael, we'll start us off. The collaboration that we saw with this group was amazing. We actually had 19, I think, in the final group that we took to Denver. A few people that couldn't make it this time and a few um, that aren't here. Um, but everyone came from a diverse background. Actually, there, you know, with 19, there were a lot more not from Visit Eau Claire as well. So we, <laughs> we, got, to, we got to talk to them and learn. Um, you know, Catherine talked about the self-involvement idea. Um, we got to learn where they were coming from. Why were they a part of this? And, and um, what what did it mean to them? And so that was really interesting to find out. Thank you. So seeing really that self-interest as we got to know each other and build relationship. Um, and so I've been in education most of my life. And so through this process, I actually learned a lot about like the, the health piece, which is something that we can also incorporate into our school. And just all these, how they come together for our families and then just to um, also help have a voice for, for our families so that uh, kids can be healthy. And I think that that's great. So I'm continuing the work of um, collaborating and transfer that information to other areas as well. Great, thank you so much. I'd like to call on my colleague Barb here and ask if you can share some of your perspectives because we really see a diversity of sectors represented through tourism, municipality, school district, um, health, and uh, education, and I'd like to see if you can just share maybe a takeaway that you had. Well, I guess the takeaway that I have is I'm in year two of retirement, and I truly loved what I did. I was a health promotion manager and wanted to keep my fingers in, you know, health and the community. And so this has been a really great avenue to, to do that. I was part of the Leadership Eau Claire team and was also able to go to Denver. Um, but this uh, group and this initiative with Healthy Communities, I mean, there's just a wealth of opportunities and things that we're doing. And it's, it's a great, like Michael said, a collaboration with all the different stakeholders and a great opportunity to meet people that I might not normally come in contact. So that's what it's done for me. Thank you so much. 